In this lesson, we'll look at an example on how to analyze pedigrees. The question reads, the diagram below shows a pedigree of three generations in a family. Black circles and squares indicate persons with a genetic disorder. A square indicates a male and a circle indicates a female. The two males in generation one are siblings. In question number one, look only at the generation two offspring of the two generation one brothers. What can you say about the genes controlling the genetic disorder? Is the disorder caused by a gene that is dominant or recessive, autosomal or sex linked? So as you can tell, we have two lineages here. We have lineage A and B. And these two brothers, one of them has the genetic disorder and the other one does not, started a family of their own. And we want to tell whether this disorder is dominant, recessive, autosomal or sex linked. That being said, Whenever you do these types of questions where you're analyzing pedigrees, you want to start with an initial assumption, which will serve as a starting point to building your final answer. And you might find that as you do the problem that the assumption needs to be changed, tweaked a little bit, but at least you're starting somewhere. So I'm going to assume that this disorder is autosomal and you'll have this genetic disorder if your genotype is capital A, capital A, or heterozygous where it's capital A, little a, meaning that it's dominant. And you will not have this disorder if you are recessive. That being said, this brother is either homozygous, dominant, or heterozygous. We don't know yet. This brother, given our initial assumption, would be little a, little a. Looking at lineage B, if this brother is little a, little a, and he marries a woman that has the genetic disorder, that means either this woman is capital A, capital A, or heterozygous. Now, if she is capital A, capital A, that means all of their offspring will be heterozygous, and all of their offspring would have the genetic disorder. Let me show you. But that can't be true, because one of their offspring does not have it. Therefore, this woman has to be capital A, little a. That's the only way for them to have an offspring that is healthy. So this is what their offspring genotypes would look like. You see, these two right here don't have it. And that is consistent with the results that we find. So I'll change this so that it is capital A, little a. Now what about this woman right here? Given our initial assumption, she has to be little a, little a. And this brother, in order for him to have a child that is healthy, has to be heterozygous. Otherwise, their offspring would all have it if he was homozygous dominant. These are the genotypes of the parents in generation one. Then the genotype here will be little a, little a. The genotype for this person would be little a, little a. Remember, you are healthy if you haven't inherited two recessive alleles. And of the remaining children, they would have to be heterozygous. So looking back at question number one, what can you say about the genes controlling the genetic disorder? Is the disorder caused by a gene that is dominant or recessive? We're going to say dominant. Is it autosomal or sex-linked? Now we haven't explored the possibility that it is sex-linked. So let's also explore that. Let's assume that this brother who has the disorder, his genotype is XY. And given that he has the disorder, and we've assumed that it is dominant, then we would put the capital A on the letter X. This brother wouldn't have it, so his genotype would be XY. Focusing in on lineage A, his wife would have the genotype XX, and if she's completely healthy, and we do this cross, we get the following offspring. This is consistent with their offspring here, because this female is affected and we see that that is a possibility. This male is not affected, and we also see that as a possibility here. So it could be sex-linked if we just look at generation two. So I'll write down over here that it is possible that he is XY with a capital A, and she is XX with no affected gene. Is that consistent with lineage B? Well, let's find out. This brother is XY without the affected allele. And this female 
Well, either she is capital A, capital A, and if that were the case, she would have both her girls being affected. And that's not what happens. So I'm going to say that she has it on only one of the chromosomes and their offspring would look like this. Notice that even one of their sons would have it and that is what we see in generation two. The possibility of having a child who is healthy given that it is sex linked is also possible. So, so far what's unsettled is whether it is sex linked or autosomal. In question number two, what additional information do you gain from examining the generation three offspring? Well, by examining generation three, we can gain more insight if it is autosomal or sex linked because so far it's unsettled. We can also tell definitively if it is a dominant or recessive allele causing the problem. So assuming that it is autosomal for now, we have capital A, little a, and this person is affected, meaning that either they are capital A, capital A, or capital A, little a. Given that they have a child that is not affected, then it's most likely heterozygous because heterozygous crossed with a heterozygous will produce a child, this one, that is healthy. So, so far what's unsettled is the fact that it is autosomal or sex linked. But let's look at lineage B and see if that's consistent with lineage B. This female is little a, little a, given what we've learned so far. And she is crossed with a man that is capital A, little a. Doing the cross, we get the following. You see, one of the offspring is affected and it's that. And the other two are not affected. So, is it autosomal or sex linked? Well, it looks like it's autosomal for now, but will it pass the same sort of tests for being sex linked? Let's find out. This female right here would have the genotype XX with one affected allele. And this male would be XY with his X chromosome being affected. And that would lead to the following. Notice that both of the females would have the disorder. And one of the males would not. And that's the case. So, so far it could still be sex linked. In lineage B, if that male is affected, his genotype would be XAY. And this female would be without any affected gene. So, this is what their children might look like. Notice that both of the boys, and in our case, both boys don't have it, which is consistent, and the girls do, and that's consistent here as well. So with all that being said, we still haven't settled if it is autosomal or sex-linked. But notice how all the daughters of affected males going from generation two to three have the disorder. This is indicative of something being sex-linked, but we can't be 100% certain unless we analyze the larger population. Furthermore, the reason why we know that it is dominant and not recessive is because if the disorder were caused by an autosomal recessive gene where if you have two recessive alleles, you get the disorder, all of the offspring in the generation two cross leading to generation three all of their offspring would be homozygous recessive and have the disorder. That doesn't happen here, so we can definitely say it is dominant. And there you have it. That's my answer to this question. If you have a pedigree of your own that you need help with, feel free to use our website at biology-forms.com. Post the pedigree there and one of our tutors will gladly help you analyze it. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again next time.